Hello everyone. In this video, we will cover the module simulation methods for CFA level 1 2025. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe and share this video so that other candidates can also benefit from it. In the description box, you will find a link to download the presentation and also a link to my telegram group. You can join that group and share your doubts. I will try my best to solve them as quickly as possible. Let's move ahead. There are three learning outcome statements in this module. We'll go through them one by one. Explain the relationship between normal and log normal distributions and why the log normal distribution is used to model asset prices when using continuously compounded asset returns. So a random variable y follows a log normal distribution if its natural logarithm ln y is normally distributed so if ln y is normally distributed we can say that y is log normally distributed so there are two most important observations about a log normal distribution and that is that it is bounded below by zero the ln y can never be less than zero it will always be greater than or equal to zero and it is skewed to the right that is the distribution of ln y has a long right tail let's say if we want to draw the distribution of ln y the distribution will be like this with a long right tail and the origin will be zero that means the distribution is bounded below by zero and it has a long right tail similarly the asset prices if you talk about any stock price or any real estate price it is bounded below by zero the asset prices are bounded from below by zero now if we want to describe a log normal distribution which parameters are required we need two parameters first the mean and second the standard deviation of its associated normal distribution that means we want to describe the distribution of y the log normal distribution of y we need the mean and the variance of l and y so we must keep track of two sets of means and standard deviations first is the mean and standard deviation of the associated normal distribution that is the associated distribution of l and y and then the mean and the standard deviation of the log normal variable itself that is y so now how to calculate the mean of a log normal random variables let's say the mean and the variance of normal distribution are mu and sigma square we can calculate the mean of log normal random variable using this formula similarly we can calculate the variance of the log normal random variable using this formula Now let's talk about a continuously compounded rate of return. We can use this formula to calculate the asset price at T using a continuously compounded rate of return of R. So basically the continuously compounded return from 0 to T is the sum of one period continuously compounded return. So we can say that R0 to T is a sum of individual sub period returns from R0 to 1 to R T minus 1 to T. Now let's assume that one period continuously compounded returns such as R0 to 1, R1 to 2, they are independent and identically distributed random variable. So the rate of returns, the continuously compounded rate of returns are independent from one period to another and they are they have identical distribution and they are random variable so the expected value of r from 0 to t can is equal to the sum of all the expected values so if all these values are from the same distribution like uh, they have the identical distribution so what is the expected value of a distribution the expected value of a distribution is the mean of the distribution that is mu so basically we are adding mu for t times in this equation 
so the expected value of r becomes mean times the number of periods similarly the variance of r 0 to t is equal to variance of the distribution times t similarly we can calculate the standard deviation also now if these distribution these one time one period continuously compounded returns are normally distributed that means each of these rate of returns are normally distributed then their sum the t period continuously compounded return will also be normally distributed with mean mu times t and the variance of sigma square t this is because a linear combination of normal random variables is also a normal random variable describe monte carlo simulation and explain how it can be used in investment applications so there are some points about monte carlo simulation that you need to remember first of all monte carlo simulation is used to estimate risk and return in investment applications basically you are simulating different scenarios in a computer application and you are estimating your risk and return using the results in this setting we simulate the portfolio's profit and loss performance for a specified time horizon either on asset by asset basis or on aggregate basis so we repeat a number of trials in the simulation each trial involving a draw of random observations from a probability distribution and they produce a simulated frequency distribution of portfolio returns from which we can calculate we can estimate the performance and risk measures so basically you provide a distribution to the monte carlo simulation and from that distribution the simulation keeps on running trials by by randomly picking up the variables and then calculating the performance and risk measures of each of these trials now what are the strengths of this monte carlo simulation the strengths are it can be used to price complex securities for which no analytical expression is available for example options options are one of the most complex securities that are available and there is no analytical formula or expression available which can be used to price the options so options are basically priced using monte carlo simulation what are the weaknesses of monte carlo simulation it provides only statistical estimates and not exact results you need to know that that the results provided by the monte carlo simulation they are just statistical estimates analytical methods when available provide more insight into cause and effect relationships the analytical methods they provide you the cause and effect relationship but monte carlo does not it is like a black box algorithm you do not know what is happening inside the program you just know the results now let's see what are the steps in a monte carlo simulation first of all we set up a predictive model identifying both the dependent variable the variable that we need to calculate and the independent variables that means the input variables then we specify the probability distribution of the independent variables then we run repeated simulations generating random values of the independent variables we do this for a number of times so that enough data is gathered to make up a representative sample of the infinite number of possible combinations describe the use of bootstrap resampling in conducting a simulation based on observed data in investment application now let's say first of all what is resampling resampling it draws samples from original observed data sample for the statistical inference of population parameters for example this is your true population you draw samples from this population to estimate the properties of this population that process is called as resampling that you repeatedly draw sample from the observed data the idea behind bootstrap is to mimic the process of performing random sampling from a population to construct the sampling distribution 
the difference is that we do not have any knowledge of what the population looks like we just draw a sample from the population this is your estimated population the bootstrapping process will treat this randomly drawn sample as if it were the population and then it draws sample from this estimated population only so it will draw these different samples and then try to estimate the distribution properties based on these samples so that is the bootstrapping that means you are taking out samples from an estimated population not from a true population so this is it for this module I'll see you in the next video where we'll cover the module estimation and inference. Until then, keep studying and share your doubts so that I can help you in clearing this CFA level 1 exam. Thank you very much.